Hi and welcome. In this video, I'm going to attempt to take out the right, not the read, but the right laser out of this rewritable DVD. I believe the writing laser is a red laser, so we should be able to tell the difference just by applying some current to it and checking the color of the light that comes out. So I have the unit here, it's all intact, and I'm going to take it down in the next couple of minutes. Okay, I finally got it out. I decided to keep the lens and other focusing mirrors intact with the laser unit. There's also like a heat sink that's intimately attached to it. And then I found three terminals, uh, C, G, and D on connected to this thing. And I don't know what those terminals are, but I probed it with um, a, a multimeter to find out uh, which terminal is which and the G looks like a common ground so I've managed to solder some wires to it that was not very easy to do because of the minute terminals but I finally did it and I've got the laser still in here and with the focusing lens and mirrors so uh, the next step is to test this thing out and uh, see how it works but first I'm going to have to uh, find um, a suitable uh, driver for it or a suitable resistor and voltage to work this off of. Okay, so what I'm using here is an LM317 voltage regulator, 10 ohm resistor, and the output should be around 3 volts. My input is around 7.4 volts from two lithium ion batteries connected together in series. Now to test it, make sure you've got some uh, protective um, laser goggles on. I've got it all connected up. I've got uh, two uh, lithium ion batteries there, as mentioned earlier. And these are a total of seven, about 7.8 volts, something like that. 7.6 volts. And um, voltage regulator. So what I'm gonna do is test it out and that should produce uh, diffuse uh, laser light. So it shouldn't be too harmful on your eyes, but you still need to take precautions with any laser light. So what I'm going to do right now is uh, turn it on. And uh, there you go. You can see the diff fairly diffuse laser light. It's not very clear. It looks like the lens is somehow damaged. It's giving a lot of streaking lines. But uh, that proves that it's definitely working. And I put a little heat sink on that LM317 and uh, staying cool. The regulator itself is getting a little bit warm but uh, that's a good sign that it's going to work. So now what I need to do is take the laser module out of this uh, heat, this uh, kind of uh, block of plastic and metal and try and mount it in something where I can have a proper focusing lens. You can see the mirrors in there but they don't really focus it into a straight beam. So, uh, so far so good. What I've done here is remove the lens that diffuses the laser light and now I've got a fairly narrow beam. It's not a totally uh, clean beam because there's some extraneous laser light around it but it's fairly intense as you can see here. Okay, what I did is I cut the whole thing right out of its casing so all I'm left with is this aluminum block. The only thing holding that on is the terminals, as you can see there. So I didn't want to cut any more into it for fear that I might completely mess up the laser. I'm sure it's pretty 
much welded or soldered in there. But that's what it looks like and uh, let's test this out. What I'm going to do is try and find some kind of focusing ring or lens for this to see if I can get um, a laser that shoots a good beam uh, without using the mirror system that came with the uh, DVD. So let's uh, test this out and see what it looks like. Because of the odd shape of that last one, I decided to work with this one from a different DVD. These ones are much better to put in an enclosure. Next I got a heat sink just like this and these are great because you can fit those rounded laser modules in these and these act as heat sinks prolonging the life of the laser. I opened up another laser module and you can see the laser light producing crystal that little blue dot right there and the tiny wires attached to it. Many DVD burners also contain a infrared laser and here's one here they contain both infrared and red lasers so this is an example of a close-up of an infrared one that I got out. Once the laser module is mounted in the housing it needs to be heat synced. This is the heat sink that I'm using for my one. For future project, I'm going to update the driver module as shown here. This can give more settings for different types of laser modules.